Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 13 of Revelation chapter 17. And we're going to be reading Revelation 17 verses 16 and 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And I'll stop reading there. Now, um, we've been going through Revelation 17 as well as the whole book of Revelation verse by verse and we've seen that the beast with the ten horns is a representation of Satan especially the ten horns point to the little season of the great tribulation and the name beast even is a name God gives Satan primarily for that one hour it's called of great tribulation well, in the previous verse, in verse 15, God uh, gave us the image of the woman, the harlot, who's called the whore, who sat upon waters. And then he explained the waters are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And that's four groups, as the number four in the Bible points to something that is uh, occurring worldwide or it is universal in its scope and likewise in verse 16 as we're told that the ten horns hate the whore and then uh, it says and she'll make her desolate that's one and naked second and she'll eat her flesh that's the third thing and burn her with fire four sore judgments or four uh, terrible things that the ten horns who are a picture of Satan does to the whore who represents Babylon and Babylon is the kingdom of Satan the unsafe people of the earth and again the number four indicating it's a worldwide judgment or it's a worldwide condemnation that this has come to pass upon all of the unsaved people, all of the unsaved people of the world in the church and outside of the church are hated by the ten horns, by Satan, and Satan makes them all desolate and, and naked and, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And when we think of this, all we can do is see what an evil ruler Satan actually is. He wants to be like God. He's always wanted the authority and power and glory of God, and yet uh, he he is um, a despo. He he is uh, a tyrant. Uh, he, he is the worst dictator that can be imagined, as he has no good intention towards those he rules over. He does not rule for their good or for their their benefit in any way. It's always for their harm and for their destruction. And well, uh, before we, we talk about these things, the desolation, nakedness, and so forth, let's um, just look at one more thing about hating the whore or the harlot and look at how Satan is able to do this or or how God views hatred and then we'll understand um, just exactly how it is that Satan hates those that he rules over. Uh, we know that Satan is the father of lies and we read in Proverbs in chapter 26 it says in the last verse, verse 28, a lying tongue hateth those 
that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. A lying tongue hates those afflicted by it, or the listeners. Those that hear the lies are hated by the one that is speaking the lies. And all we have to do is go back to the Garden of Eden. And, and there was this beautiful, uh, wonderful new creation, a uh, perfect place, no sin of any kind, that mankind was happy, content. Adam and Eve were sinless, and, and all that they did was good, and the animals were, um, were perfect. The, the whole creation was beautiful and perfect and pure and holy as God. God created all things good. And then comes Satan, the serpent, who somehow um, managed to fall into sin himself and, and become this deceiver. And that's, of course, at the allowance of God in order that God's overall plan for this world be carried out. And, and, and so Satan comes in, in the form of the serpent or indwelling the serpent, and he begins to speak lies, saying to Eve that uh, she will not die if she eats of the fruit of that tree that God has forbidden her. And, and God does know in the day you eat thereof, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And, and then she eats. And let's ask the question, because Satan had a lying tongue. Did he hate the woman that was afflicted by it? Why, of course. It was the most horrible thing anybody could have done for Satan to lie in a world where there was no lies. There was only the truth of God. And to introduce a lie was uh, ugly and awful and filthy and dirty. And it, it meant no good for the hearer. And we see that when Eve and then Adam believed the lie, uh, all of the terrible consequences on that day, because in that very day they died in their soul existence, and what happened? As soon as they ate, they realized they were naked. And, and so there we see the lie of Satan making her, the ones afflicted by it, as he hates the whore Babylon, the kingdom of Satan. He, he hates mankind created in the image of God through his despicable lies through his deceitful nature and uh, uh, right away the woman and and man realize they are naked and and when God comes they hide themselves because they were naked so the the ten horns who are a figure of Satan hate the whore and Satan hates this world and Primarily, this hate is demonstrated and shown through his lies, as, as um, he is the father of lies. Lies come forth from Satan. Now, we're familiar with the lies in the churches and congregations, that God has given his pure, holy word, an uncorrupt form. It, it is perfection in the original Hebrew and Greek, no errors of any kind. And here is the word of God. And God delivered that word to Israel of old. And God delivered that word to the New Testament churches and congregations in a completed form after the Bible was finished. And here is the perfect word of God. Now, what does Satan want to do with that word? Exactly what he did in the Garden of Eden. When the Garden of Eden was perfect and pure and holy and good, Satan had to pervert it. He had to distort it and introduce the lie into it 
which brought desolation, which brought the spiritual nakedness of mankind, which brought man to self-destruction, where it's as though man is being consumed by his own sins and iniquities, which brings man to the wrath of God and the burning with fire. So as Satan brought the, this evil into the world and, and afflicted mankind with his lying tongue and, and man has suffered ever since, so he assaulted the churches and congregations. He must come against that pure good word of God and pervert it. And that's what another gospel is. When the true gospel of the Bible is changed and altered, and just a, a, a little turn here or there in the road that God has set forth that leads to heaven, just a little twist of the scripture, a little violence done to the law of God, well, that, that's all Satan wants to do. He wants just a little um, element of deceitfulness it, to enter into the declaration of the gospel and that's all it takes and that turns Eden into a, a corruptible habitation. It turns that which is perfect into our present world and if you want to see the damage that a false gospel can do just look at the world and see what a little lie spoken by the serpent back in the Garden of Eden has wrought. Look at the, the murder and the stealing and the cheating, the backstabbing, the gossiping. Look at the lying that men do, the hating of one another that is constantly going on in the world, all a result of the lie introduced into the perfect Eden. And likewise, look at the churches that have Bibles. And that Bible is a translation of God's pure, holy word. It is rightly called a holy Bible because it is perfect and without error or lie. There is no lie in the scripture that God has given and so God delivers it to the church. Satan enters into the churches and congregations. And he did this all throughout the church history and infiltrates the church with his emissaries whose chief aim is to distort and turn that beautiful book, the Bible, into something other than it is, into a lie so that the people within the church then begin to believe the lie over the truth, exactly as Eve did way back at the very beginning uh, when Satan uh, brought doubt into her mind and said, Hath God said you will not surely die? Does not God know that in the day you eat thereof you will be like God, knowing good and evil? And, and so... Satan gets into the congregations and into the churches. Has God said this is the way of salvation? Or is it that you can just accept him? And doesn't it say that here? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or has God said there's not to be divorced for any reason? Doesn't it say over here something uh, that that uh, sort of gives the idea that there can be divorce? Or has God said that um, wh whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, God has written the Bible in such a way to allow Satan to make these kinds of claims? And, 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 and God, of course, we get into a whole other uh, area there of why God wrote the Bible in this way, but but this is the working of Satan, and and this is what we see here in Revelation 17 with 
um, the ten horns that hate the whore and she'll make her desolate. And uh, we can see abundant evidence of Satan's hatred for the church through the Gospels that he has brought forth. And sometimes you have to wonder if uh, there is some evil glee and satisfaction taken by him by seeing these churches and congregations, people called by the name of Christ, Christian, that uh, that go after ridiculous and foolish doctrines like falling over backwards or holy laughter or that believe the lie uh, that God is still communicating with dreams and tongues and visions. And, and, and when we see the corrupt nature of these churches and how far they have fallen, uh, we, we can see the hatred of Satan, the hatred of Satan for these poor people that are within these churches and congregations. But what about the world? What about the world outside of the churches? Uh, it is through lies we see that Satan hates those within the church by having them believe the lie for instance, believing that the church age is still continuing when it has ended, by uh, believing that God's Spirit is within the church when it has departed. But outside of the church, it's the very same thing. We have a world that actually believes that it is a good thing, that it is a woman's right to choose to kill her own child within her womb. The, the lie of Satan has so deceived people that large percentages, large numbers of mankind today think it is a right and it is a, a, a good option to, uh, once you find out you're, you're with child, to go to some evil doctor somewhere who has evil nurses in attendance, and to have them destroy that child. And, and yet the, the, the government does nothing about it. As a matter of fact, the governments of the world more and more support this evil thing because they are likewise deceived into accepting this lie from Satan. And we see, as it says here, um, concerning the ten horns that hate the whore, who again are the people of the world, the unsaved, that, that the ten horns make her desolate and naked, and she'll eat her flesh. And there man is consuming himself, destroying himself, killing his own offspring, killing his own children. And uh, it's all a result of believing the lie. Likewise, believing the lie that it is a good thing. And now it's a moral issue. It's a good moral thing to allow two consenting adults not only to engage in homosexual activity, man with man or woman with woman, but to marry and to enter into a committed relationship with the seal of approval of the state. And they're also seeking the seal of approval from churches that would marry them in some cases. And here is a, a, a big lie that Satan has gotten the world to swallow and to believe so that more and more people, I think we're getting to the point of a majority of people, believe it. there's nothing wrong with that, that it's fine. No, it doesn't matter if the Bible um, says everywhere that homosexuality is a sin and, and, and God indicates that homosexuality is actually an indicator of the time of the end of the world. It doesn't matter that all of man's history, secular history, all the thousands of years that we have knowledge of, homosexuality was a forbidden thing something that was 
not acceptable, and that's why they used to speak of it as being in the closet, and, and when you make it known, you come out of the closet. So for thousands of years, all civilized societies, all the nations of the world, condemned homosexuality. The Bible condemns homosexuality, but now suddenly the lie is believed and the world thinks, oh, we've evolved. We've evolved. Now, I don't know why they think they've evolved. They haven't evolved in any other area. There, there's been a de-evolution. There, there's been a return to um, barbarism uh, in society in general, in most cases. So why they think there would be some sort of evolution or progress in that area is, is all part of the lie that they believe this. And yet it is very self-destructive to society, to the individuals invo involved in those kinds of relationships. There cannot be any true happiness. There cannot be any true goodness involved in something that God says is sin. And, and so we have Satan destroying the world with his lies, destroying the world out there with the lie of evolution and uh, atheism, that there is no God. Uh, destroying the world with a lie that abortion is a woman's right, with a lie that, that same-sex marriages are good and proper, with all kinds of lies in the world, and with many more lies in the church, Satan hates Babylon. He hates the people of this world as they are afflicted with his lying tongue, and they believe the lie. And look what God says in Romans chapter 1. Concerning this, it, it, it's Satan making her desolate because God loose Satan. So God ultimately is the one behind all this. God is the one in control of all things. And God's the one who tells us in Romans chapter 1 in verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And, and it continues with uh, a list of horrible sins, all very self-destructive, all uh, that cause injury and, and bring sorrow and shame to mankind. Stirred up by Satan, but allowed by God. God says he gave them up. Just as he says of the churches in 2 Thessalonians 2, in verse 11 and verse 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in in unrighteousness. See, God ultimately is the active um, mover behind the scenes that is controlling these circumstances in the world. The world is not going crazy, and, and Satan has not somehow usurped the authority of God and, and finally gotten the world to the point through their wickedness, that they can do whatever they please and God can't stop them. No, that's not the case. It was Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, that loosed Satan. And knowing exactly what would happen, the increased wickedness in the world, the increased apostasy in the church, all a result of God's active will and, and sovereign will that these things take place 
before the end of the world come. And that's why we read in Revelation 17, verse 17, For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. It's all happening. All these things we see, even gay marriage or or millions of children being aborted, terrible, awful things, according to the, the Bible, because they're sinful things, and every sinful thing is a terrible, awful thing. But these, of course, have grievous consequences. And yet God gave man up to these things. God sent strong delusion that they believe these kinds of things in order to prepare the world in, in past years for Judgment Day, and in this time to destroy mankind in their iniquity as God has brought the Day of Judgment. And this will lead, of course, to the final end, the complete and utter destruction of this sin-cursed creation and this sin-cursed world, this sin-cursed people, all that have never found Salvation by the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over Pal Talk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.